It is a week for today, Sunday the 6th of May 2018, since Dr. Lester James Peavis left us at 99 years and 24 days. He's left behind a body of work of 20 films spanning 50 years, from Ray Carver of 1956 down the line to Amma Brune of 2016. And this year, his story is in Vaishnavi, the Sumitra Peavis movie. It's been many years. Apart from his body of work which he has gifted to Sri Lankan and world cinema, his other gift to Sri Lankan cinema is a lady who is considered today the quintessential mother of Sinhala cinema. Ayurangani, Medhenia, Sira Singha, who will now pay tribute to Dr. Peters. Mrs. Sira Singha, you know him for 70 years. Take us back to the pre-London era. Yes, I believe I met Lester when I was in the university and I was doing uh, many stage plays and Lester would come to see the stage plays and I think that's how I met him first. And uh, later on, of course, I, I got married, uh, not to Mrs. Sarah Singer, to Mrs. Anayaka. And he was very friendly with uh, Lester's brother Ivan. So we went very often to Ivan's and Lester's uh, home in Dehivala and we talked about everything and anything and everything. What was life like in the Pirisers, Dr. Pirisers residence? Yes, well, I met uh, Dr. Pires and, and Mrs. Pires. They were extremely... Senior. Nice. Yes, yes, senior. And they were extremely, uh, you know, very nice people. And what, what are the boys like? Lester, uh, Ivan, Noel, Noel and Erika, his sister? Erika, yeah. Yes, we met them all. And especially Ivan, because he was a painter and he wanted to paint my portrait. Then I used to go practically every day to their house and sit there for hours. And their home was also a very interesting place because so many artists and um, people interested in music and painting and dancing, and people, a lot of people came there. The, the 40 43 group had been formed by then. I was just about to say the 43 group was formed then. So lots of the 43 group people also came. Who were they? Uh, well, there was Man <coughs> one of Manjushri. Manjushri was a regular visitor to Ivan, and uh, um, Richard Gabriel. Richard Gabriel. There was Colette, Aubrey Collette. Col Col Aubrey Collette and people like that. Uh, you know, so we. What <coughs> struck you most about LJP when you first met him as a young man of thirty years or whatever? Yeah, well, he was interested to talk to because, and he was full of fun, you know, always, even in the very last days that I met him, he had some little, you know, he has such a good sense of humour. His cryptic wit, yeah. which is best known for. Yes, yes. And then you met him in London, when he was there. Yes, and then, yes, then I met him in London. And at that stage of course of his life he was very interested in films and although he was a journalist he was uh, not was re really interested in films and filmmaking and that was a, a time when Akuro Kurosawa had made his uh, film and so on and taken London by storm the whole western world I would say by storm so we spoke a lot about films and uh, you know, where did you all meet in London? Was it the tea room? Uh, yeah, I think I went once or a couple of times to his little flat and uh, sometimes we met in tea rooms and restaurants and so on. And uh, What was life like at that time? It was slower paced? Yes, much slower paced, I would say. And London, uh, England was just trying to get over the effects of the war. Yes. Uh, so we talked a lot about the war and what it has done to uh, people there. So LJP's first uh, venture as a director, The Moving Image, was Farewell to Childhood in 1950 in London. It won the Amateur Cine World Silver Plaque as one of the 10 best films of that year. And that was a documentary. And then came Soliloquy in 1951, which won the Mini Cinema Challenge Cup for the film showing the greatest technical proficiency award. 
And then he came back to the GFU and did documentaries on venereal disease and malaria and garbage and then came to Be Safe and Be Sorry in which you first starred in 1955. Yes. As this cranky old woman, right? Yes, as the cranky old woman who drove a small little car and hugged the middle of the road and wouldn't allow anybody to overtake me on this side or that side. Uh, that was a role I played. How did he direct you? It was your first time, I believe, on the moving event. Yes, when he asked me to take part, I said, my God, I've never done any work in front of a camera. I don't know how to. He said, don't worry, don't worry. You act, I, you act on the stage. It's the same thing. There are little differences with the camera. And I will tell you what there is. And both of us will do it together. He said, don't worry, nothing to worry. And true enough, I didn't have anything to worry. Did he ever lose his temper? Never. I've never seen Lester losing his temper. Was he impatient? No. I have not seen him impatient either. He was very uh, thorough and he knew exactly what he wanted to do and he got it done. But uh, he also understood, you know, that we are working with other human beings who have various other... Uh, so when you first acted in To Be Safe or Be Sorry, his first ever documentary, locally done for the, the traffic police in 55, did you ever think that you would be a predominant feature in many of his films to come? He had not embarked on a career as a film, film director, feature yeah. films. No, I never, never dreamt that. I, I thought this was a one and only film. I mean... And were you relieved it was, it, that it would end with that? Well, yes, because we, I mean, nobody was, I, I didn't know of anybody who was acting in films, you know. I didn't have any friends in, in the film world. So I didn't think of film as a career. I just wanted to act. And that was, that's all I wanted. That was Lester Pires, the pre-London era, the London era and the documentaries. We take a break now and we come back with Rekha. We now come to Lester James Pires, the film director of Full and Feature Films. Mrs. Telsing, you've been in seven of his 20 films. Ray Carver, Sandeshia, Delova Katara, Ransalu, The God King, Avargira and Vaikanda Balawa. Let's start about Ray Carver. Why did he cast you? How and why did he cast you in Ray Carver? That I don't know why. <laughs> I really don't know why. Maybe because he had seen me acting on the stage and he thought that I could uh, manage a role in his film. What was your first reaction? My, my first reaction was, my good heavens, I can't, I can't. Why? Because, especially because I had to learn so much singular dialogue. So? I had never played in any role in singular. Not, the, not even on the stage. Yeah. Not through singular. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but um, and, and to learn that dialogue terrified me. I said, no, no, I can't, I can't. Uh, there was no dubbing. You had to There was no speak dubbing then. No, no, no. Camera. Straight, straight. Okay. Uh, forward. Um, and he said, what nonsense, you will do it, you can do it. And he said, you know, if, if, you, if you make a mistake, we reshoot the uh, scene, there's no, no problem about that. He said, but I'm quite, quite certain that you can do it, otherwise I would have come and asked you. So he so had confidence in you? He obviously. seemed, obviously. Great confidence. <laughs> yes, yes, apparently, yes. So, um, that's how I started. Right. Now, Ray Carver, why was it considered uh, a Karavi plot? <laughs> oh, Kumar, that's a big story. It's really funny. I don't know how, how people, I, I can't. Um, when I was, soon after the film was shown, somebody came and told me, why did you take part in that film? Why did you take part in that film? I said, why? I said, my <laughs> God. And we are in that costume, we are in that costume, that jacket. So I said, well, I, know, I was a little bit stunned. He said, the kaba korutu. Oh, you were a Kandyan lady, no? Yes, I was a Kandyan. <laughs> born by Karave people. Don't you see? Re Kava Karave. <laughs> oh, it was a trap. <laughs> Lester James Pierce was, And he said, don't you know that Lester James Pierce was a Karave? So I laughed like hell. I said, Lester will be the last person to be thinking about caste. I mean, he just did not think of cast. I, so I said, what rubbish is this? He wanted to make a film. 
I quote LJP from his book. He says they replied, "Why don't you know? Why don't you know about the trap that everybody is talking about?" <laughs> Sunil Shanta, who did the music, is a karave. <laughs> Reverend Father Maslin Jayakudi, who did the lyrics, is a karave. And Lester Pierce, of course, is also a karave. <laughs> Christopher Pierce is also a karave, and there are a few others as well. There was Romulus a karave. Rekava <laughs> is an anagram for karave, and those people are so so cleverer even about their caste. That's what LJP says. <laughs> Now, shooting in the village Rekava, uh, the the film was struck by chickenpox. The Margo oh, Sadiq. Yes, 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 yes. I remember that. Yes. Were you struck by chickenpox? No, box? thank God, I I escaped. <laughs> and what about the monkey? How did he handle the monkey? And the monkey, monkey <laughs> yes, owner. Yes, the monkey owner. The monkey owner was drunk <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> so was the monkey, I think, because he gave the monkey all sorts of things. The monkey only had to have a bottle of arak a day, and the monkey had half a bottle of arak. <laughs> and again, as LGP says, the monkey beat everybody except Billy Blake and myself. <laughs> yeah. So what was it like living in the village, shooting this film with uh, LGP? Yes, actually, I didn't live in the village with the village people. We were put in a rest house. I can't remember the rest house. Hello. Hello, rest house. Uh, But you we spent your time in the village. Yes, 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 yes. We, but I mean, I, I'm quite used to spending time in the village because I'm from the village. Huh? So, and that to uh, Kuma helped me a great deal. That that I came from a village because the village, uh, you know, the people, the way they move, the way they sit, they stand, they fight, they cry, and their speech. All that helped me immensely. I am very grateful to the people of that village because that alone helped me so much in, in doing this character. How did LJP handle the little boy and the little girl, your son, in the film? Yes, they were total amateurs. The girl had acted in one earlier film, I think, Ahankar Istria, in 1954. Yes, well, well, the boy was a little bit of full of fun. The girl used to disappear. Between shots, and we couldn't find her. Sometimes, you know, it took quite a long time to find her, and nobody knew what on earth was happening. That she was, and then it was only later on that we found that this poor child had cancer, and she died of it too, at a very early age. I mean, before the film was released, I think she died. Yes, the girl died at 12 years, and the boy also died of cancer. He became a cameraman and died of cancer when he was 40. So. It was also a very sad story. I mean, the things that happened uh, happened uh, on the set. Now you acted with your husband, Winston Sierra Singer. Yes. But you were on opposite sides. Opposite sides, definitely opposite sides. So how did Mr. Pierce handle the little boy, the girl, as to to make them act? They would not have known what acting was. Yes. Well, he just wanted them to be natural, no? and actually, in Sri Lanka, on the films, there was no natural acting at that time. So they would have thought that they had to do something unnatural, you know, the kind of acting there was on those films. And uh, but he said, just be yourself, just be natural, and talk naturally like you you would talk to her, to this girl when she's running about in the village. So he handled them very well. All the actors were natural actors. Dear Nana Kar, my goodness me. The only thing that Romila Silva. Who was a uh, Tower Hall actor, and he always acted the king and all that. One day, Lester came and told me, "Look, look, just watch uh, um, uh, Romulus when he gets onto that cart and he drives the cart here. He says there also he's the king. <laughs> Romulus stood, you know, with the cart like this, and he was you know, like that. <laughs> he said that's perfectly all right by me. But anyway, he's a king." So that's all about Ray Carver. We take a break now and be back with Sandeshya. In 1960 came his second film Sandeshya, and Mrs. Sarah Singer was cast in a totally different uh, perspective. You were this coquettish young woman who was <laughs> carrying eggs into prison. Now, how did he direct you in that that role? Yes, um, it was so different from the Ray Carver's role, and. Uh, I had to carry this bag of eggs and go and give it to various people. And Any specific way of walking, of talking? Yes. So, so I had to walk uh, long distances with this bag and so on. And then he said, "I rangani, I rangani. Did I see you walk across that place? 
leaving your little backside a bit. <laughs> so you went past the hole, hole? <laughs> yes, yes. He said, <laughs> I have such a past also. <laughs> he said, let's see you shaking that a little bit more. <laughs> so, so you did it? He, he, well, I, I don't know, I suppose. <laughs> I don't know. And uh, we also had very interesting uh, episode there. Um, the, the one who played the, the jailer and I had to go and give him eggs and he was supposed to be a person who loved, loved eggs very much and he would break it and swallow it immediately. But he was also a guy who stammered, poor. Okay. Yeah, he stammered. So every time he broke the egg and put it in his mouth and all that, he said, my name was Yasohami, I think. Yeah, okay. Yasohami, oh, oh, oh. and he, he couldn't say anything more. Okay. So cut. He had eight eggs before he finished the roll. And I said, my God, I can't go anywhere near him. He's stinking. I said, Lester, please. So, uh, but he was so very nice with that fellow. Also. And then you were caught for treason and you were condemned to uh, to drown to death. Yes, yes. yes the How did he handle the drowning scene? I had a mother care who had to uh, tie my hands and push me into the water. So Lester made very, uh, took a lot of trouble to put people around uh, the river where I was going to be pushed in because I thought I would drown or something and for me to be... But you could swim? I could swim but uh, anyway, this was a river and he was taking no chances. So uh, anyway, the Vadaka you know, was told to tie my hand and, and at the end of the rope we tied a uh, rock, yes, a piece of rock so that it will be there will be weight. The dead Irangani will go down. The Irangani will go down. And he said, now go shouting down, scream and go down. And once you hit the water, send up bubbles, bubbles. Okay. Now he's, he was thinking of his shot, you the know, visual, that shot, yeah. yeah, the visual. So anyway, I told uh, uh, this father care, I said, please don't push me flat like that in, into the water. I'm going to stand here. Don't push me like that. Push me like this so that I fall feet first. Otherwise, I hit my stomach. Hit the stomach and I won't be able to breathe. Or... So he said, Ah, right, right, right. And so we tied this uh, knot and the gala. And he pushed me, but he forgot and he pushed me in the normal way, pat like that. And I went screaming and bock, I hit the water. And whatever little, a little breath yeah. I had that was I escaped and I went down and when I went down no, the idea was that I should do this and take the, uh, the store it was a off. Kambi. It was a kambi. Oh, okay. But I was struggling and struggling to take this off and it wouldn't come off because we didn't think the kambi had got, when it got wet yes, that yes, it yes. got tighter. Yes. So I couldn't I found it extremely difficult to take it off. So I was there as I struggling, struggling, struggling and my breath had also gone. Now you're underwater? Underwater, I'm underwater. Somehow, anyway, I managed to get rid of it and popped up. And when I came out, Lester said, But I Rangani, you didn't blow the bubbles. <laughs> the bubbles. <laughs> you were barely alive. <laughs> I was barely alive. There. I didn't have any breath left of me. And Lester said, You didn't blow the bubbles. I couldn't have laughing, you know. I go. <laughs> And then after I went, I told him he was very sorry about that, but uh, it was so funny. We fast forward to 1975 to God King, his first ever huge international movie. And there she was, Datu Sena's sister, who again, for treason, was, uh, was, was, was to be burned to death. And there was a pyre, and there comes Mrs. Sersing, regally dressed onto the pyre, and she's put there, and they throw. Yes, when we rehearsed it, I went and got onto the pyre and uh, the person outside or outside of the set he had to throw some uh, petrol uh, onto the pyre so that when they lighted it it uh, got, got, came on fire 
The rehearsals were done with water. The rehearsals were done with water. And there was a water can and there was a petrol can. And there was this man who had to throw it. And I came there now for the rehearsal and I came to the pyre and I sat down. Very regally I laid down on the pyre. This man was about to throw the, uh, pet, uh, the, water. the water when Lester was standing by the man and then he said, Oh, Vaturada. And the man had said, Oh, oh. But Lester had somehow taken it and looked at it, petrol. And if that man had thrown the petrol, I would have to have. <laughs> How did he know to check? It was all perfectly rehearsed. It was perfectly rehearsed. But what, what made and him do a double check on that? God knows, God knows. It was my, my karma also, you see. <laughs> he saved your life. He saved my life. He saved oh my, my God. Life. Um, that was uh, back on the Balauga uh, in 2001, where you were aunt, the eccentric Aunt Catherine. That I think is real, I don't know the <laughs> And uh, what about Elson, Divitoragama? Yes, well, Elson was very, very sick and he was hospitalized and not allowed to move out of the hospital. But Elson had also been given a part in this. Your valley? Uh, yes, that's my valley. And when he found that he was in hospital while the film was being made, he thought he can't stay like this. He must go and take part in the film. And he had skipped out of the hospital. He escaped from the hospital. Uh, he escaped from the hospital and came out of the set. <coughs> And Lester didn't know about this hospital business, but he knew that Elson was uh, sick. And Elson was you know, obviously sick because he was seated like this also. And when Elson had to be brought to me, I was on the set, he had to be brought to me, he had to come to me uh, to, you know, to play with me. Lester, who was uh, directed the film then, took hold of uh, Elson and practically carried him up to the set. This huge figure, Elson, although he was sick, he was a large fellow, no? and, and Lester was so small, and Lester almost carried him gently, gently, gently. I was so touched, you know. He was such a caring person. Mm, yes, and in caring. Abaragira, you had this brood of children who were, didn't live up to expectations, and there was the incident there again with LJP, and Kamal, Adararachi. Yes. That was the first time I saw Lester lose his cool a little bit. There was this scene where I'm Kamal's mother and Kamal has to come and go worship. onto the ground and worship me and say that he's going. That was, that was the scene. So now this was the rehearsal and Kamal came and he worshipped me and Kamal being such a naughty fellow, he took my the hem of my uh, red and just lifted it a little bit and did that, you know, just to play the fool. It was it was rather funny, but this this, we were have, this was a rehearsal, and so people were laughing. And, LJP? And yes, he got a bit upset, so he said, "Kamal," and he told Kamal. He didn't shout at him, didn't make a scene. He just told Kamal. A rehearsal is as important as a shot itself. That is a very, very important thing. And you don't play the fool during rehearsal. You have to be as serious as you are when you're actually doing the scene. That was so he didn't even, he, he never lost his cool. Yeah. So, <coughs> LJP is gone. He's left behind his 20 children. His 20 children are his 20 films gift to Sri Lanka and to Sri Lankan cinema and to Asian cinema and to world cinema. These 20 children will keep his memory alive across years, across time. So LJP will never be forgotten. Mrs. Seva Singer, as one who knew you the longest for 70 years, as old as, you, as old as our independence, what would your wish be for Dr. Lester James Beers today? Seven years, seven seven days after he's gone. Yes, Puma, I'm a Buddhist, so I pray that he will be born in a place of peace and tranquility, but also that he will be born as great an artist as he was when he was alive here. 
and I, I think I also, in my heart of hearts, I think, I hope he will be born again in Sri Lanka and give to Sri Lanka, not necessarily to the films, to any, any aspect of Sri Lanka, as he has given before. Made such a difference to our culture. And that is my wish for Mr. James Pires, my guru. Okay, thank you so much. I'm sure he heard you.